Hello, this video will explore two solutions to this Excel BI challenge from LinkedIn. The challenge is to find the first three Friday the 13th after each date in a list of dates. First, we'll look at one possible option using an Excel formula. We'll use let and create a variable called input and set it to the range A2 to A10. We're gonna be creating a long list of dates between the minimum and maximum dates in the input. So let's create underscore min by applying the min function to the input. Next, we'll create a sequence and call it sec. This will be a sequence of dates between the minimum date and three years and one day after the maximum date. This is a safe distance from the max date since each year has at least one Friday the 13th, so that will handle the very last row in this input list. The start of the sequence will be the minimum date. Okay, let's take a look at that. Yep, lots of dates, more than 100,000 of them. Next, we'll use filter to filter this big list of dates for only those where the, the text representation is equal to Fry space 13th. Let's take a look. Yep, they're all Friday the 13th. Next, we'll use reduce to scan through the list of dates and produce a long string that has all the Friday the 13ths for all the rows. The initial value is an empty string. The array we want to scan through is the input. Then we define a lambda function with two parameters, A for the accumulator and D for the current row because it's a date. For each row, we want to filter that list of Friday 13th to only those that are greater than the current date. And we only want three of them, so we use take three. We'll join the three dates for each row together using text join with a pipe delimiter. And then join the current row to the accumulated value with a semicolon. This is really just the fancy way of saying join the result of the first row to the initial value, join the result of the second row to the result of the first row, and so on. The result of all of this is a big long string of separated numbers which are actually dates. Now we've got that big string of dates, we can use text split to split it into an array. We just use the pipe as the column delimiter in this function and the semicolon as the row delimiter. That gives us this array. It has this extra row at the top because of the initial value of reduce being an empty string. We can just get rid of it using drop one. This is better, but these numbers are stored as text. So we just convert them back into numbers that Excel recognizes as dates using the double unary operator. That's really just two minus signs. And that's it. You can see here that each of the dates matches the expected answer. Now let's take a look at one way to do it. With Python, there are of course many, many ways to do it. This is one of them. Using the time delta module makes this much easier, so we import that from the date time package. Let's create a function called Freaky Friday, and we'll define a list called date list. That date list will be a list comprehension, DT for D in range 365 times three. This gives us a range of three years worth of integers and dt will be defined as this expression, a date plus time delta days equals d. This expression essentially means that for each integer d in the range defined on the previous line, add that many days to the date passed into the function and call it dt. By defining it with this colon equals operator, this is actually known as the walrus operator, we can reference dt elsewhere in the list comprehension. That's how we're able to put DT on the first line. So we want where the day, i.e. the day of the month of this date is 13, and where the weekday of this date is four. It's four because by default, the first day of the week is Monday, and that is represented by zero, so Friday is four. Then finally, we return the first three items from the date list. Now we just need to apply the function to the input data. We'll create a data frame by first getting the dates from the range, referencing the first series, i.e. column, in the returned data frame using zero as the index, then applying the Freaky Friday function to that series to give a result which is a series of lists. Using toList on that series of lists converts it into a form that can be used by the outer call to pd.dataframe. We can then set it to return as Excel values and hit save to calculate the result. As you can see, the result matches the expected answer. So that's it. Two ways to solve a problem. I prefer the Python method because to me at least it's a bit simpler. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.